While feeding her dragons, Danny is warned by Jora once again about the fact that they are not tameable beasts. He also informs her that Dario Naharis and Grey Worm are gambling. When the army of Unsullied halts in unison, Jora faces the crucifixion of a small child, one of 163 along the path to Marine, greatest of the cities of Slaver's Bay. As the one who has been at her side the longest, Sir Jora volunteers to face the champion sent out by Marine when Daenerys arrives at their gates. Daenerys refuses to gamble with the life of her most trusted advisor, general, and dearest friend. She instead chooses Dario as her champion, who is successful in killing the Miranese champion, Osnak Zopal. Following this, Danny begins her siege of the city by speaking of freedom to the gathered slaves and then catapulting the broken chains of those she has freed across the city walls, demonstrating her previous successes. During the siege of Marine, Jorah accompanies Daenerys when she gives her commands to Grey Worm, just before their infiltration among the Miranese slaves. Following her success, she plans to crucify 163 great masters in retaliation for the 163 slaves, against the advice of Jorah and many others. However, she follows through with her plan, hanging the Targaryen standard from the Great Pyramid during the crucifixions. Sir Jorah informs Daenerys that King Joffrey Baratheon has been poisoned at his own wedding. He also informs her of the disasters in the two cities she liberated, Yunkai and Astapor. Daenerys's companions debate about possibly mounting an invasion of Westeros due to its current state. Jorah is against it, stating that their forces could not conquer all of Westeros alone and they have no real allies on the continent. After Daenerys dismisses the rest of her council, she tells Jorah that her business in Slaver's Bay is not yet complete and intends to stay. Jorah is present when Daenerys receives a goat herd whose flock was incinerated by Drogon, which Danny pays for by giving him triple the value of the goats. Following this, his Darzo Lorak pleads for his father's body to be removed from its crucifix, along with those of the other Miranese nobility, for burial in the Temple of the Graces. Daenerys allows this, having sent a clear message to the Great Masters. Some weeks later, Jorah enters Daenerys's chambers early in the morning and is not pleased to find a partially dressed Dario exiting. Dario quips that it is a good time to petition Daenerys because she is in a very good mood. Entering the Queen's conference room, he expresses his distrust for Dario, insinuating that Dario only murdered his superiors and joined forces with Daenerys out of lust, and thus is not a trustworthy ally. Daenerys tells Jorah that she sent Dario to take the second sons to Yunkai to regain control over the city and kill the masters that have resurfaced. Jorah relates to the mercy shown by Eddard Stark for his dealings in slavery and convinces Daenerys to bring the masters to justice without execution. Daenerys considers for a moment and then tells Jorah to assign his Darzo Lorak as her ambassador to offer the masters a choice. They can live free in the new world she wants to create, or they can die clinging to their old one. The second sons will be stationed in Yunkai to enforce whichever choice the masters make. She also says to let Dario know that it was Jorah who changed her mind. As Barristan Selmy watches the Unsullied taking down the crucified slave masters outside of Marine, a small boy approaches him, giving him a scroll bearing the seal of the king's hand. As Barristan reads it, he realizes that the letter was signed by Robert Baratheon, the same year Jorah and Daenerys first met each other. Barristan confronts Jorah about this before telling Daenerys, saying that he doesn't want to go behind Jorah's back. He tells Jorah that he knows the truth. Jorah was initially working as a spy for Robert. As Jorah asks to speak with Daenerys alone, Barristan tells him, you will never be alone with her again. In the throne room, as Jorah walks up the steps towards Daenerys, the tension mounts when she asks for an explanation. Jorah explains that the situation is a ploy by Tywin Lannister in order to divide them. However, as the scroll was signed the year Jorah first met Daenerys, she asks if the pardon was forged. Reluctantly, Jorah tells the truth, at Daenerys's request. He confesses to providing the spider the information on Daenerys's activities in Essos. Daenerys gets angry when Jorah also admits that he provided the information of her pregnancy with Drogo's child, as it led to her nearly getting poisoned by the wine merchant outside of Vise Dothrak. Jorah defensively tells her that if it hadn't been for him she would have been poisoned, but she counters that was only because he saw it coming. Jorah calls her name and begs for her forgiveness, but she rejects, saying that he sold all her secrets to Robert, the man whom she finds guilty of her family's murder. 
Jura is forced to leave the city within the day or have his head thrown into the slaver's bay. Jura then leaves Marine. 